Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, free site, dwyervip.com, free site. Today is March the 14th, 2018. Let's talk about Vasilomachenko's challenge of Jorge Linares for the World Boxing Association's lightweight title. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now this fight is close, but it's gross. <laughs> this fight is close, but it's grossly mispriced. Let's name a betting shop right now and the absolutely ridiculous line that they're putting out there. It's Bet 365. Right again, today is March the 14th, 2018. And right now on Bet365, you can get Jorge Linares at four and a half to one. Right? Bet a dollar or a pound to win four and a half dollars or pounds with the return of the dollar or pound that you bet. Right, folks, this is simply ridiculous. Understand, Jorge Linares, a three-division champion, won his first title more than 10 years ago. He's a future Hall of Famer. Right? Just from a value perspective, and sometimes it comes down to value, Whoever you think is going to win this competitive fight, I believe the play is to take Jorge Linares to win the fight. Lord knows they're paying you to do so, right? Four and a half to one that needs to be part of your betting portfolio. And I would hedge the play with whatever the over is, right? I don't believe Vasil Lomachenko, who I picked over Guillermo Rigondeau, I don't believe Vasil Lomachenko can stop Jorge Linares, right? I believe the hedge works because the only way Vasil Lomachenko can win this fight is in the later rounds or by decision on the scorecards. Let's talk about it. Again, that bet is Linares to win, right, at four and a half to one, hedged with the over. Let's talk about it. Just understand, Linares has more power. You're talking about one of the better skill sets in boxing, right? Linares hits much harder. I mean, much harder than Vasil Lomachenko. When Linares knocks you out, you're knocked out. Right? You've been hit. You've hit the canvas. Right? That's a little bit different than the kind of stoppages Lomachenko's been getting. Also, understand, a lot of Loma's game is angles and being able to switch hands. Right? He's a southpaw. Oh, he's orthodox. Oh, he's back to southpaw. Understand that one of Linares' signatures is hand speed. Right? He has very fast hands. I know some of you are going to say, come on, he's an old man. He's only 32 years old. He still has very fast hands. I believe that his hand speed and his foot speed, his ability to cut off the rain, is going to prevent Lomachenko from being able to play games in switching hands. In other words, when the fight hits a certain speed, if Loma's fighting a guy who can actually follow him around the ring and who can fight at that speed, which Nicholas Walters could not, which Guillermo Rigondeau could not, which Linares can, I don't think Lomachenko's going to have time to fool around and switching to his offhand. 
I don't think Lomachenko is going to have time to say, oh, let me get into a southpaw stance here. Lomachenko, quite frankly, is going to have a hard time outmaneuvering Linares. So I'm expecting a big part of Lomachenko's game. His ability to switch, to go out the window. Right? As an aside, let me just say, too, that because speed can put a damper on a technician's ability to switch hands and stances, that's another reason why I believe Manny Pacquiao, very fast hands, would have more of a shot against Terence Crawford, a guy who switches, than the public believes. Right? Well, I believe Lomachenko is going to have a problem switching against Jorge Linares. I think Linares' hand speed and foot speed are exemplary. I believe this is a different fight than the types of fights Loma has had recently, right? Rigondeau, defensive fighter. Not a guy who threw punches in bunches. Not a guy who could just welcome an offensive shootout and get offensive like Linares can. Now let me say this about Linares. Great skill set. There's a hole in this game, right? I'm sure Mikey Garcia and others who have wanted to fight Linares feel that this hole exists, and it's his chin, right? He got knocked out early in a fight against Salgado, his first loss. People might remember he hits the canvas multiple times against Sergio Thompson, right? All of this is years ago. Linares is a guy who, if you hit him the right way, the lights go out. But you see, here's the catch in this fight. I don't believe Lomachenko has the power to hit Linares the right way. In other words, Linares will never quit in a fight. He's a warrior, folks. He's a warrior. Go back and even look at his loss to Tony DeMarco. Let me point out, by the way, those are the only three losses he has. Right? Salgado, Thompson, and DeMarco. And you're going to see that he's better than DeMarco in that fight. But he's bleeding profusely and the blood was an issue. Right? Even with blood all over the place, Linares refused to quit in the fight. Linares will never quit. So, in terms of people thinking about the hedge, right? And I'm recommending the over as a hedge, right? Just understand, Lomachenko won't be able to hit Linares just right to get the kind of knockdowns, in my opinion, that Sergio Thompson got. He just doesn't hit hard enough. He doesn't plant his feet long enough to get off big power shots. Let me say this too. I know some people are going to be fooled by the KO records. In other words, you look at Lomachenko's record and you're going to say, Dwyer, how can you say he doesn't hit hard enough to drop or to stop, really, Linares, right? I'll say Loma, who is quick, who is awkward, might be able to catch Lenares off balance and knock him down. I just don't think he'll be able to knock him out. Right now, I know many of you are going to say, look at all these knockouts over quality opponents. Folks, understand, what happens in Lomachenko fights is guys get discouraged. They say, no mas. I've had enough. Right? The guys are fully conscious at the end of a fight. So, Nicholas Walters. We'll just talk about three of Loma's more known stoppages. I believe Nicholas Walters could have given a very lucid interview one second after deciding not to come out for the next round. Right? He quit on a stool. Jason Sosa. 
Right now, this fight got my goat because had it gone a half a round more, I would have hit on the over. But Jason Sosa's corner man waves off the fight. Sosa's losing the fight, right? But Jason Sosa's completely lucid, right? He's he's not concussed. He's embarrassed. He's not knocked out. Right? This is a corner saying, hey, I'm going to save my fighter for another day. When the fighter himself wasn't being counted out. In my opinion, wasn't close to being counted out. Guillermo Rigondeau. Wasn't that stoppage by embarrassment. Rigondeau understood he was in the ring with a young lion who was much faster than him, who moved much better than him. Rigondeau pulled the plug. He didn't pull the plug because he was hitting the canvas and he's, you know, getting plundered and he's badly cut. You know, you weren't watching that fight thinking to yourself, ref, please stop the fight. Right? How could the ref be so cruel? No. I believe that Loma is winning fights by stoppages through embarrassment of his opponent. Well, Linares, a future Hall of Famer, a guy who's blood and guts, he's not going to get embarrassed. Right? There's certain guys who are in the ring who, you know, the only way they're going to get stopped is if the referee comes in and stops the bout. Someone's at my door. I'm going to have to cut this video short. We'll pick it up in a part two at a later time. Thanks for coming by.